I have the pleasure now to interview Lee Bryant, who is director of Headshift. And I would like you to introduce yourself. What, what's your job now? Hi, so um, Headshift is a social software consulting and development company in London. Uh, we work with international organizations across Europe and basically we help organizations use these wonderful new social tools internally within their organizations. And what are the main features of uh, uh, the relationship between uh, uh, enterprises, business and uh, Web 2.0? Well, it's interesting. I think there's a, there's a misconception that these tools are purely consumer tools. Uh, so they see Wikipedia, they see Flickr, they see MySpace and so on. But if you look at the characteristics of these tools, they're actually very, very useful inside quite tight, focused social networks, such as a large organization. And they can uh, reduce the costs and make uh, the process of sharing knowledge and internal communications much more effective. I know that uh, you, had, um, you have a blended approach. Uh, what is it? Well, um, in the old days, people would look for one software solution to solve all their problems. Uh, these days, we know that's not possible. So what we look for is, uh, is really what we think of as an ecosystem. So we build an ecosystem of, of tools, services, and, and data. And we're looking to really combine the best modes, the best features of each of those. Um, but in the service of a real uh, business benefit. So what we do is we don't just give people a wiki or give people a blog, but we give them a, you know, a business application that uses a wiki and a blog and, and these other features as well. But it's got to feel um, what we call situated. It's got to feel like it's theirs and it's specific to their conte uh, context and specific to their needs. So it's, it's based on the real need of the enterprises that you are working with. I just understand it. Absolutely. We, we don't try and um, persuade people that they need to love a blog or get into a wiki or get onto MySpace. What we do is we try and uh, find real business needs, existing tasks, scenarios, workflows that they already do, but perhaps are not well supported by existing tools or perhaps they're done largely by email and sharing uh, documents. And then we'll show them uh, a better way and usually a more connected way of doing the same thing but using social tools. So we really do believe that all of these applications have to start from real needs. Um, there's, no, uh, there's no point in trying to persuade people that they've got to use something because it's new or because everybody's talking about it or because it looks cool. It's got to have hard, hard business benefits. And I think that helps us and it helps, it helps the, the organization as well. Now I have for you a tough question. Okay. Um, what do you think that uh, it will be the future landscape, the future of uh, Web 2.0? I think we'll lose the term Web 2.0 um, because that's um, a very uh, temporary name that people have given to a, a, a cluster of developments that have happened in the last, in the last five years. Um, I think, in a sense, um, what we think of now as products will become features. So they will just become absorbed into the general IT landscape of, a, of an organization. I think also one of the big changes we'll see is a more diverse IT landscape. So people won't look for one vendor or you know, one company to solve their needs. They'll have systems for managing lots and lots of small pieces um, and joining them together through APIs, through user experience design, and through the, the things that really matter. So I think uh, products will become features. The features will become blended into the general landscape. We, it's like the telephone. You know, we won't have conferences about, the, about Web 2.0 like we don't anymore have conferences about the telephone. It's just something we, we all know we, we take for granted. But to achieve that and to get to that position, um, these things, these tools and these systems have to become easier and easier for normal people to use. So we need to focus on the needs of the second wave adopters, not the early adopters, and make sure that they can just do it because it makes sense and because it, it's, um, it doesn't require training or any effort. And if we can make it that easy so it just blends into the background, then I think we will have succeeded. And how do you think that uh, the large part of people will use this technology now? Not all technology are used by all people. Someone uh, is not used in mobile phone. Uh, uh, and so how you do you think that people will be connected with this new media? I think people ha will have a variety of connections. So I'll have my mobile phone. I might have a BlackBerry, um, my TV at home, my, my computer on my desk, my computer at home, you know, any, any computer I find. Uh, these things will live on the web, so they won't be tied to one device. Um, and I think basically wherever you are, 
your own preferences, your own information and your own social network will follow you. Um, and so I think really that's how people will, will use these things. It won't be specific to, uh, to one context or specific to one, to one device. So we, change, we need a change of paradigm. Do we need a, um, a change of paradigm uh, of point of view about technologies? I think so. I think the key thing is that, um, I mean, I, I grew up with computers from the age of 10, so I was programming when I was 10. Um, the new generation who are uh, much younger than me, <laughs> um, they are Internet natives, and so they don't need to learn this stuff. It's just assumed that it exists. Um, now, if we're to learn from their behaviors, then I think we do need a paradigm shift. But the paradigm shift is for IT to become so simple that it's no longer IT. It's just a set of features and capabilities that are assumed to exist in any, in any, um, in any system, in, in any piece of technology. So we're already seeing some of the ideas um, like mashups and like uh, customization moving out of what we think of IT and into consumer devices. So uh, Matt Webb did a great presentation at Reboot uh, a few weeks ago showing um, photocopiers that allow you to have your own personal settings and, and, and do different things with them. So I think you know, these things will just bleed into the, into the background <clears throat> and we will no longer be controlled by IT departments. And I think that will be a great day when the IT department goes home um, because at the moment they behave like priests. You know, they, they, they are there to certify and to control everything that's more technical than a, than a watch. Um, and people have lived with this, this control for too long, and it makes them feel that IT is not theirs. It doesn't belong to them. It belongs to IT people. Um, and that's the main thing that we have to change. I think that's the big paradigm shift. I'm glad to thank you for your very interesting uh, answers, and have a good day. Thank you. You're most welcome.